Congress. Let's bring in Natasha Stoinoff. Uh, Ms. Stoinoff testified in E. Jean Carroll's case against Donald Trump. She had previously accused Trump of assaulting her at Mar-a-Lago uh, while serving as a journalist for People uh, magazine. Um, Natasha, if it's okay for me to call you that, uh, thanks for joining us. Um, what's your reaction to the verdict? I'm elated and very emotional about this. It's been an emotional week, I have to tell you, and I, I didn't expect the jury to have a response so fast. I didn't know what that was going to mean. And um, when I heard the news, I got to tell you, I was um, jumping up and down. Well, I, I imagine a part of it was because you, you told your story to them and, and they believed you. I mean, that must have been some of what you went through. Very much so. Um, for, all, for many of us who came forward in 2016, it's been a long road um, and we've dealt with a lot of people not believing our stories. So to, to give the story under oath and have a jury believe it is um, a very heart, you know, heartwarming, um, vindicating feeling. Um, just a, a feeling of hope that when you tell the truth, you can be believed. Obviously, uh, you're one of more than a dozen women who have made such allegations uh, against the, the former uh, president. Um, what, what led you to into that courtroom? I, I'm not sure if you're comfortable talking about it, but, but how did you come to be one of the women uh, testifying uh, that day? Um, well, her, her, her team asked me if I would, and um, I think the belief was that um, I helped show a pattern and um, that it would be helpful for the jury to hear that. And um, when they asked me, I just thought it's something that I had to do. Was it difficult? It, it was difficult leading up to it. And amazingly, once I got into the stand, I, um, I just felt like it was me and the jury and that I was telling them what happened. I, everything else around me just sort of disappeared and it was like this strange sort of Zen moment of truth where I was finally telling it uh, in an area that was very, in a medium that was very serious and important and uh, nothing else mattered. So the difficulty sort of disappeared once I got on the stand. This is, this is kind of a difficult question, but um, do you think it's that people don't believe you or do you think that the people who vote for Donald Trump anyway just don't care? I think it's a combination of both. I think that they hear all sorts of negative uh, news about the women that were, that were liars. So on the, the first step is that they don't believe. And then I think that there's a certain group that think it probably happened and don't care. And that really is actually the most heartbreaking to me. And as somebody who was uh, assaulted uh, by Donald Trump, um, per your testimony under oath, um, what is it like to see him leading in the polls, not just for the Republican presidential nomination, but most recently in an ABC News Washington Post poll, uh, leading against Joe Biden for the presidency, removing politics from it, just talking about what you experienced and what so many other women have uh, testified under oath uh, and in public uh, about their experiences with him assaulting them? Um, well, first, I'm never quite sure anymore what to believe when we hear about polls. So Fair. I don't take it too seriously. Fair. Yeah. And then I just sort of hold on to hope that the American people have learned a lot over the last four to six years and will make a wiser choice uh, in 2024 than they did in 2016. I just, I have hope for the American people. Natasha uh, Stoinoff, it's a brave thing to come forward uh, to tell a story uh, about uh, an assault, and it's a brave thing to do so before a jury, and it's a brave thing to do so right now. So I, I thank you, and I thank you for what you're doing, um, not just for justice in E. Jean Carroll's case, or your case, but also for all the girls and women who don't deserve to be assaulted out there. Thanks, Jake. Appreciate it. Here to discuss CNN's chief legal analyst and former federal prosecutor, Laura Coates. Also joining us, Renato Mariotti, also a former federal prosecutor. Um, Renato, quick verdict by the jury. Quick verdict, even surprising Donald Trump's attorney, Mr. Tacopina. What would you make of that? 
Well, it certainly suggests that the jury found the evidence very compelling. And I really think Trump and his team are to blame for that. I mean, they did not put up a defense. He did not testify. He was not even present for the trial. Uh, so really, I think they made this job very easy for the jury. And so I'm not surprised that the jury reached the verdict that it did. Laura, does it undermine Mr. Takapina's attempt to try to get Donald Trump an appeal, the fact that they really didn't stage much of a defense? Well, you know, in the civil world, he's not required to actually testify or appear. And that seems very counterintuitive to anyone who would be accused of something as significant as sexual assault in this category. But he's not required to do so. So his absence is not going to be the reason he will say, hey, the jury did not give my client a fair shot. That was his choice to do so. The, the more fertile grounds to actually appeal would be on the area of testimony that was allowed to be heard by the jury. They heard this category of sort of pro, a prior bad act evidence. If you remember from the Cosby trial, obviously different circumstances, and that was a criminal kind Text, there was a lot about how and who could actually testify about things that were alleged to have happened that were not charged outside of the context of these specific allegations. There was more than one person who was allowed to testify, as you just interviewed as well, about this very notion. So the idea of whether that was unduly prejudicial is going to be the real crux of an appeal in this matter. He's already alluded to possibly looking at the jury pool somehow being tainted. If there is some basis under the voir dire principles to suggest that they did not have an unbiased jury or had reason to believe people were biased and chose them nonetheless, that would be the right ground. But the other than that, not much to stand on. So, Renato, I think it's fair to say uh, that E. Jean Carroll's, um, her case was not a slam dunk. Uh, there, you know, she couldn't, she didn't know the year it took place. Uh, there were other questions uh, that Mr. Takapina was able to bring up. I think um, Donald Trump made E. Jean Carroll's case easier with his testimony. And I want to run a, a piece of his video deposition. When he's asked about the Access Hollywood tape from 2006, uh, in which he infamously claimed that, that people like him, stars, could grab women by their genitals because they're so famous. Here's, here's part of that deposition. I want to get your reaction to on the other end. In this video, I just start kissing them. It's like a magnet. Just kiss. I don't even wait. And when you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. Grab them by the pussy. You can do anything. That's what you said, correct? Well, historically, that's true with stars. It's true with stars that, that they can grab women by the pussy? Well, that's what... It's, if you look over the last million years, I guess that's been... Largely true, not always, but largely true. Unfortunately or fortunately. And you consider yourself uh, to be a star? I think you can say that, yeah. So, just to underline this, he's, he, he says that stars like him, I'm paraphrasing obviously, stars like him can get away with sexually, assault women, sexually assaulting women, unfortunately or fortunately. Quote, Unfortunately or fortunately, uh, that must have just been a gift to the to E. Jean Carroll's case, um, don't, don't you think, Renato? Yeah, I, absolutely. And there's, it's absolutely indefensible, right? So, you know, if he had a if that deposition was full of him talking about how tortured he felt that someone would dare would accuse him of this because he would never do anything of that sort, and he just can't imagine that. It would have been one thing, right? That's what you would expect uh, uh, somebody, a normal person, to react to something like that. Uh, but somebody uh, like Donald Trump, frankly, I think he revealed something to the jury, which is he's not bothered by this concept. He not only, you know, is saying, look, this is, the, you know, the Access Hollywood tape is something I said long ago and I didn't really believe and I feel horrible I said it. He, he basically was defending it, saying it's absolutely true and he's, I don't know how you could say it's anything's fortunate about sexual assault. It's a violent crime, and it's it's disgusting. And frankly, the jury, as like I said, he made the jury's job very easy.